Hi, it's me, Vicky Marie. Let's just say hello to our oh, Chumba, you're here. Hi, Chumba. Hi, Joe H. And hi, David. Now, sorry it's a total impromptu live again because uh, I wasn't planning on doing a live tonight because Monday's always a bit of a funny day, but also, of course, it's bank holiday in the UK, isn't it? So I hope you thought, hi, Shelley. Oh, Shelley, all the way from Canada. Um. Yeah, I hope you've had a, if you're in the UK and you've, I hope you've enjoyed your bank holiday weekend. I don't know what the weather's been like. It's cooled down a little bit here. It's a little bit cooler. You know, I've only got two fans on today as opposed to three fans and aircon. Um, but yeah, as I say, I wasn't planning a live, but <clears throat> this is something that's quite close to my heart. And I know a lot of you... Oh, thank you, Chumba. I know a lot of you like me are animal lovers, and maybe you've heard this story, maybe you've watched this documentary, Blackfish. Um, and that's what I'm going to talk about tonight, because I was very... I, in fact, I've been off Netflix for a while, uh, just because there was, you know, every now and again, I just have a little rest from it and go on to Prime or something. Because, you know, you just watch all the same things. Hi, Wendy. Yeah, well, listen, that's it. I've I've not been to Sea World, Sea World, but I've been here in Spain. In Valencia, there's Oceanographic. Uh, it's called. It's a similar sort of thing, like a smaller version of Sea World. And uh, I've been there. You know, the thing is, I've, I took my son there. You know, children love all this. I, you know, I, like you say, until we realised just how badly they were treated. And also, it's education of knowing how these animals, these orcas, these killer whales, how they operate in the wild and how um, totally wrong it is for them to be kept in small tanks. You know, they swim for miles, you know, day in, day out. They, they And they live in pods in families and things and... You know, all the things, they try to recreate these things in the um, enclosures. You know, they think because they put them in with other killer whales. But, you know, it's like it's like somebody taking you out of your family environment and putting you in with other families. I mean, some of us might be quite glad for that to happen. But you know what I'm saying. You're used to your family. You know, you don't necessarily want to socialise with other families. So there's been lots of problems. And the thing is, they were never talked about. It's, it's not only with the whales, is it? It's like with everything, you know, zoos now we don't approve of. Or, or our zoos are different now than they were years ago. Everything's different now. Circuses are different. We, we have become more educated in animal welfare. But, um, ha, yeah, Joe H, have you seen it? Now, the, and so the reason that I'm on here sort of talking about it is because I don't know if you know, but when this documentary first came out, Blackfish, it's called Blackfish because that's what the islanders called them uh, from places. You know, <laughs> You going in the bathroom? Places where the natives uh, to they called them blackfish, so that's why uh, the documentary is called Blackfish. Uh, I've completely lost my train of thought now because of the dogs barking. Uh, oh, so yeah, so this documentary came out in two thousand and thirteen, and it caused an absolute storm. You know, like an outrage and a big backlash against SeaWorld in Orlando, etc. Um, and, and then it was removed, just as it had caught, one minute it was all over Netflix, you could get it on YouTube, you, could, you know, it was just like the documentary of the moment. And, and then the next minute it just completely disappeared and it was banned. So... I just was flicking through Netflix today in my lunch break and that and saw that it was back on Netflix and I couldn't believe it. So for you, so the, when I watched it, probably the same as um, you, Wendy, and Joe, uh, when I first watched it, it was quite a few years ago. 
and you know i've looked for it since and uh, anyway i'm going to tell you the story of tilikum so tilikum is the whale the killer whale that is featured in the documentary blackfish um but it also talks about other whales uh, you know so i'm gonna basically i'm gonna start off by just telling you about killer whales in general now i know this is different from my normal subject true crime or whatever and there's probably quite a lot of my subscribers maybe won't be interested in this but i don't do thing i do things i'm interested in i know that's awful and i hope that people are interested in, you know try to give people something interesting uh to watch and it could be about anything um but so you were so Wendy when you saw it was actually Tilikum uh, that you saw yeah and it was probably with Dawn Branchow or Branchow his trainer um, anyway so first of all I just want to tell you about killer whales in ah no Shamu Shamu is uh, I think it's maybe Tilikum's daughter shamu hi cheryl shamu because i've looked up about shamu uh in while i've been researching for this let me just check i think shamu shamu died at only nine years old if it's the one i'm thinking of yeah uh shamu yeah is a, a different a different whale it's a female whale shamu and she was captured in October 1965 from a south, a southern resident pod. Don't know what that means. And she was sold to SeaWorld San Diego. Now, let me see. I'm sure Shamu died. Yeah, Shamu died. No, Shamu is from 1971. So that's much before uh, you saw her. But she was only... Um, well, she'd had six years of captivity uh, when she died, but they don't know when she was born. See, this is the other thing. Killer whales in the wild, females can live to over 100 years old. Um, you know, they, they can live as long as that, the females and the men, the males. You know, unfortunately, the males always don't quite live as long as the females. The males tend to live for 50 years in uh, in the wild. But in captivity, they don't live as long as that, neither the females or the males. They never live as long as that. And that was a lie as well that was given out years ago by SeaWorld, you know, saying that, oh, yes, uh, killer whales, they live much longer in captivity because they're looked after and they've got veterinary care and this, that and the other. And it was a complete lie. Hi, Daisy. Complete lie. Hi, Heather. Um, well, Tilikum wasn't supposed to be still performing then. Anyway, let me tell the story and then we'll pick up on the odds, uh, you know, on the uh, odds and ends as we go um so yeah it's a total lie they told quite a few lies they said that whales lived long killer whales live longer in captivity when they don't they live much longer when they're free uh they also said that this uh because male killer whales 100 percent of male killer whales that are in captivity have a floppy um thing at the top uh and that what the you know the lie that they put out was that this was just something that happened in five percent of you know it was just uh nothing to do with them being in captivity now occasionally in the wild you do find killer whales with the floppy dorsal fin but uh, it's very occasionally uh, whereas in captivity every single male whale that is a killer whale that is in captivity has this uh, floppy dorsal fin. Yeah, the top fins, yeah. All of them that are in captivity. So let me just read you a little bit about... Hi, Jane JF. 
Um, let me just read you a little bit about actual orcas or uh, killer whales in general because uh, and this information is from the National Geographic. I mean, they're so intelligent, you know, I mean, they even, they've got so many, they have different languages. So that's the other thing that they're saying about, you know, when they put them together in family pods in captivity, but not with their own family pod, but like with other um whales you know that they've not grown up with they've not been born into those pods they have slightly different languages they would like you know being thrown in with a chinese family or a spanish family or a french family so you don't not only they're not your family but you don't even understand the language that they're speaking i mean it's incredible when you look into it and anyway, let me read to you a little bit about orcas, which, so that is their, their common name is an orca or a killer whale. And their scientific name is Orsinus orca. They're mammals, they're carnivores. I mean, the thing is, they're not called killer whales for no reason. They are killers. I mean, you know, in the wild, they are predators, you know, and there's different, they, um, some of them feed on seals and things like that and then others feed on fish and whatever but they you know they are carnivorous um so you know it's they are dang they can be dangerous to be around obviously anyway their average lifespan in the world it says here 50 to 80 years but as i say an article i was reading it said that the females can live as long as 100 years in the wild um their size can be anything from 23 to 32 feet. Their weight can be up to six tons. I mean, it's incredible, isn't it, really? They're massive. So, you know, they need a big area to swim. They swim. That's all they do all day. They swim and dive, you know, in the wild. That, but they can't do that even at SeaWorld, and they try to recreate I don't know, some big place for they they can't recreate uh their actual wild habitat, can they? Anyway, it says here on the National Geographic website, orcas or killer whales are the largest of the dolphins and one of the world's most powerful predators. They're immediately recognizable by their distinctive black and white colouring. They're smart, they're social. They make a wide variety of communicative sounds and each pod has distinctive noises that its members can recognise even at a distance. They use echolocation to communicate and hunt. They make sounds that travel underwater until they encounter objects and then they bounce back revealing their location, size and shape. So they can be, although they often frequent uh, cold coastal waters, they can be found from the polar regions to the equator. They're the top of the food chain and they have diverse diets. They feast on fish, penguins, marine mammals, seals, sea lions and even whales as they have teeth that can be four inches long. They're known to grab seals right off the ice. And they also eat fish, squid and seabirds. So they hunt in these pods and their family groups of up to 40 individuals. Uh, Jack? No, no, stop that now, please. They appear to be both resident and transient pod populations of orcas. These different groups may prey on different animals and use different techniques to catch them. Resident pods prefer, tend to prefer fish, while transient, transient pods target marine mammals. All pods use effective cooperative hunting techniques that some liken to the behaviour of wolf packs. So as far as reproduction is concerned, they're protective of their young and other females often assist the mother in caring from them, for them. They give birth every three to ten years after a 17-month pregnancy. They give birth to one baby at a time, which may nurse for up to two years. 
Uh, to imagine you get 17 months, that, but bless them, they're pregnant. In most cases, the bond between the juvenile and the mother will eventually weaken and the young orca will go in its own way. But in some pods, the juvenile may stay with the pod if it was born into its, you know, for its entire life. So this is why it's so cruel. I, and they're not doing it now, to be fair. Uh, they're not hunting orcas now, uh, you know, for captivity. But, of course, this is what they did years ago. And this is how um, Tillicum was caught let's have a look at a little picture of Tillicum. i mean it's t you know i mean they do sort of all look the same if you like because uh it's difficult to tell one from another i suppose but right i'm going to show you some pictures of him So there he is, bless him. And do you know, I just feel what I feel with Tillicum. You know, if you watch uh, Blackfish, if you haven't seen it, if you've got Netflix, it's back on now. Um, to me, when I watched it and you see like um, what happened, I think it was a psychosis. You know, definitely he got the right on. Um, this is his uh, trainer that he. I mean, he's he's been responsible for the deaths of three people, but the the sort of most surprising one, I suppose, was Dawn, because um, you know they were so close. So she was a very experienced trainer. Um, so it was you know more. I'm going to tell you about all the three cases of the three people that he killed. Um, you know, very sad. But you can see. I think he was happy when he was. Um, you know, doing his act or whatever, because he was being entertained and he was being occupied and he was getting his fish and his treats. Uh, but you know, I, just he, he, I, in my opinion, watching it, I thought he just didn't want it to be over. And then he got the right. Oh, he got really angry with her, you know, and he just went psychotic. That's why I think apparently he was given drugs and things. So, you know, why should he has psychosis just like people do? Uh, anyway, let me just... Uh, what they still do... Um, hi, Hannah. So who's that? Um, Wendy's saying that they still do it in Russia. yeah well you know the thing is people it's like an ignorance really isn't it i've done it i've been to these shows and things years ago and that and a few of us are, are saying that hi rio um hi princess you know we we've all sort of you know done it in the past but these other countries need to catch up with it so it's terrible uh, i mean really really terrible but anyway Okay, so that's basically about killer whales in general. So we can see now, um, if you watch the Netflix documentary, Blackfish, it's, you know, they talk to um, some people that, you know, that were on the cruise, like when they first, uh, in the, the, the sort of first, you know, years ago when they went out hunting for whales to bring them, you know, when all this was starting about using them in shows and things like that. And uh, there's one guy on there, I'm just going to broke my heart. He really did because he said everybody wanted to go. We all wanted to go. We all wanted to go and help to catch you. So it was a big adventure. It was like, yeah, you know, that sort of thing. He said, but afterwards, when we saw because uh, they chased down these killer whales. And what these killer whales did, the mothers that had uh, babies with them, they tried to sort of faint and go a different way, you know, to try and, you know, the males went one way to try and lead the, the hunters. They knew they were being hunted. And uh, the mothers sort of went a different way. 
And anyway, it didn't work because in the end, obviously, man is more intelligent and, uh, you know, cleverer, if you like, cleverer for catching and murdering animals. And um, so they did find these mothers with their babies and they took the babies away from them uh, because he said we were instructed to take the little ones because they were cheaper, you know, to... Um, cheaper to sort of carry you know in freight and things like that so because they were smaller they were easier to manage but he said he said in my whole life you know i've seen some terrible things he said but i've never seen anything like that that i saw that day they were screaming the mothers were screaming the babies were screaming you know i could cry now just thinking about it. i mean it's just awful you know so awful 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 um but anyway that's what they did now tillicum when he was caught let's see if i can see when he was caught yeah he was captured in iceland in 1983 and about a year later i don't know where he was in the meantime he was transferred to sealand Sealand, which doesn't exist anymore and this was in victoria british columbia and then he murdered well say so he murdered it uh, seems like a dramatic thing to say but in a way he did he did kill a trainer there at sea world but it was completely covered up so this girl now i've got a copy of the inquest here because uh in the black blackfish documentary there's a couple of women speaking who were at the show uh, where he killed this uh poor girl uh kelty Byrne, who was one he, he she was his trainer and she fell into the pool what these girls said was that she seemed to sort of slip um but these girls say see it says here she fell into the pool, but these girls say she didn't fall into the pool. Tillicum took her into the pool. And they knew it was Tillicum because how they tried to cover it up after was to say that it was all the whales, you know, just like uh, not attacking her really, but just sort of stopping her from getting out that made her drown. But these girls that were actually at the show said they knew it was Tillicum because of his um, floppy dorsal fin. So they knew that it was um, Tillicum. Now, what have I done with the inquest? I have the inquest somewhere. Is in, it, let me just show you, actually, I just want to show you Kelty. Is that sharing? I don't know if it's sharing. Nope, hang on, let me just get back on there. So here's Kelty. She was just a young girl. Uh, apparently, she just loved being a trainer. Um, and, but, you know, unfortunately, it resulted in her being attacked, battered to death. Uh, bless her. So that was the end of Sea, uh, sea World. You know, that was the end of that. And they didn't know what they closed their doors. Um, but, of course, I suppose that, you know, these whales are worth millions and millions of dollars, pounds, whatever. And especially the males, because the males, you know, for breeding, etc. So Tillicum was worth so much money, you know, and everything comes down to money, doesn't it? Let me see why I can't find the... I definitely found the. No, I think things disappear off my. Ah, here it is. So, this is the coroner's inquest on Kelty, um, Kelty Lee Byrne. So, now it, it said that forced, she died of drowning. Now we know, don't we, that uh, coroners can manipulate inquests. So, it says she di died of drowning due to a consequence of forced submersion by orca killer whales. Now, what I'm trying to say is 
those women that were actually at the show said said it wasn't all the whales it was tilikum you know tilikum that was the first time that he showed signs of aggression and it this was covered over it was never so and apparently then when um uh he was bought then by the other company he wasn't supposed to be it was only supposed to be used for uh, breeding uh and for like some maybe presentations and things but not shows like he'd been in before because it was known that he was a bit of a loose cannon you know it was known that he was so um you know but that didn't have so for a while they didn't show him but then you know money it's all about money isn't it so they did start to show him in the end uh and it was a big cover-up it was a massive cover-up uh later on as well so that was the first that was the first poor unfortunate trainer that uh he killed and I'm not blaming Tillicum. I think I, I, my heart just bleeds for Tillicum because, you know, he was taken away from his mother. And you talk about social animals, do you know, like that. Uh, and then he was bullied by the other whales, the female whales, you know, and they used to rake him a lot. So this is what killer whales will do if they, because not out in the wild, they don't do it because they don't go near other pods. They don't go and have fights with other pods. But because they're in such close captivity, what they do is then they start bullying each other and they do this because they've got those massive sharp teeth. They rake each other and Tillicum was covered in that he was raked uh, by the females. He was bullied by a lot of the other whales. So he didn't have, you know, a happy life in captivity. Um, yes maybe that would have been you know maybe that would have been the good time but anyway they didn't let him loose so unfortunately he was worth too much money to them right now let me where am I going my dog do you know what hey let's see their fight because it's packed Soon as it goes. Stop, stop, come here, come here. Will you stop barking, please. Stop barking. Little shits they are. Oh my god. Uh so where am I going now? Go oh, will just totally make me lose my thread. It's not difficult. Shut up. Now, you know, they did recently, I think, it didn't, wasn't it this year, just recently, they, um, they, did, they did release one of the killer whales back into the wild. Then. Stop it! They're going absolutely mad here with a sock. Now, stop I can't do it, can I? I can't do it while you're barking. Now, they have, just to let you know what the current situation is before we start looking at other things about Tillicum, SeaWorld has decided to discontinue their theatrical orca shows. So they're just using them for presentations instead of having them provided. <laughs> So, currently, there are 55 captive orcas in parks across the globe. So, 55 all over the world. So, that's a lot better than it was, anyway. You can only hope for improvement, can't you? But there's a chihuahua barking outside. We've got them playing and going mad in here over us. <laughs> I might have to put them in the bathroom because they're not showing any signs of... Right, so that was the first uh, unfortunate trainer that Tillicum 
uh, killed. And yeah, that probably was a time that, uh, well, certainly the time that he shouldn't have been used for shows and things. Um, now, in the wild, very, there's been no fatalities of attacks of orcas on humans. There's never been a fatal attack. There's been occasional attacks, but never a fatal attack. So, you know, um, and as of, he's saying here, that as of 2022, only four humans had died due to interactions with captive orcas, and Tilikum was involved in three of those. So this is the first one that we've just talked about, Paul Kelty. Now, one of the other uh, people that was murdered, murdered, killed by an orca was a Spanish guy in uh, the Canary Islands in Loro Park. And it was a very similar situation, uh, a, a trainer um, just training with his orca that he'd, um, you know, trained with many, many times. And the orca just had a bad day, you know, I mean, they have bad days, it's got annoyed for whatever reason, who knows, you know, because I wasn't there at that time. But, um, you know, we don't know. But uh, anyway... So let's go to, to the second. Now, the second uh, person who died because of Tilikum it is a different situation. Uh, and this was um, Daniel Dukes, who's a 27-year-old man from South Carolina. Now, SeaWorld's story is that he was a homeless man who climbed into Tilikum's pool and drowned. However, uh, the coroner's report and animal rights advocates for Tilikum have pointed out that his corpse was found severely mutilated. So the thing is, uh, he was found in the morning dead. Uh, he had his genitals had been bitten off. Uh, he had, you know, so he had been attacked. I mean, I think he probably, you can imagine it, can't you? If he was like high as a kite or on drugs or alcohol, he's just decided, oh, I'm going to go and swim with a killer whale, you know, like you do. Um, but bless him, you know, he's got into that pool. He, he, it seems likely that he did get into the pool himself. And now... He's more regarded as a trespasser and not really a victim of Tilikum because he should never have got into the pool in the first place. But when you watch uh, Blackfish, you will have a different, a different opinion because, um, I mean, at the end of the day, he shouldn't have been there. He did go in there in a place where he shouldn't have gone. And whatever he did, whether he got into the pool or whether he was stood at the side of the pool and Tilikum pulled him in, who knows? We don't know. Though, having said that, some people say there must have been CCTV. You know, quite often these big companies, they don't release the CCTV, do they? I wonder what the CCTV... Because SeaWorld claims to have no security tape footage at the pool on that night. On that night, so that's that's convenient, isn't it? So normally, I, I would imagine they always have their uh, security cameras or whatever around, you know, an animal like that that's worth millions and millions of dollars, and they don't have any security uh, footage. But anyway, according to them, they didn't on that night. So it's unclear exactly what happened. Uh, you know, so who knows? Who knows? Anyway, his parents, they did file a lawsuit against SeaWorld, uh, but it was dropped. So nothing came of it. I think it'd be difficult, really, because whatever, at the end of the day, he shouldn't have been there. But, um, you know, I don't know. But in Blackfish, it does explore his death, you know, and it, it, it's... It explores the fact, you know, the way that the media investigate deaths of sort of mentally ill individuals and homeless people, like as if they don't count or whatever. But um, anyway, he was Tillicum's second victim and he was SeaWorld's first major incident. So 
But of course, so that's two people now that are dead uh, because of tilikum, if you like. But, you know, it's not tilikum's fault. You know, I'm not saying it's tilikum's fault. I, I say my heart just bleeds for tilikum. But surely, I don't know, some, some sort of alarm bell should have been going off by then. I don't know. Um, I don't know. You know, nobody knows, obviously. But now we're going to look at Dawn, bless her. Now, the thing is, Dawn was Tilikum's trainer. So um, she, as I say, she did have a relationship with him. Um, you know, she'd had a long relationship with him. She was 40 years old. She was the most experienced trainer that was there at SeaWorld. Uh, she was the head trainer. Um, and she was you know, rubbing him as part of a post-show routine and he grabbed her by the ponytail and pulled her into the water. So we're going to have a little look, not at the actual video of it happening, but the, video, uh, the build up to it, the lead up to it. Uh, everyone's out with the dogs tonight. Okay. So this is Dawn here. And they, it was at a show. Now, apparently the show hadn't gone well. And Tillicum had been in a funny mood, edgy, they were saying. And he wasn't responding properly to commands. Uh, they were running out of fish. And there's a very interesting part of the Blackfish documentary where one of the trainers says that the whales know when you're running out of fish because they can tell by the sound in the bucket. You know, if there's too much water in there slopping around, they know that you're running out of the fish and they get, like, antsy about it. You know, they get angry about it. And this apparently what is something that was happening that day. They were running out of fish. Tillicum was very edgy, he'd not been performing right in the show. And then um, when he came up for his treat, th there was something he, he was supposed to do. He was supposed to come back to her when she blew the whistle. He didn't come back. One of the other trainers on the documentary said they thought that he hadn't heard the whistle because he would definitely have come back because he wanted his fish. Anyway, he didn't come back. So when he did come back, she wouldn't give him his fish. So he's obviously got the right on there with her. Um, I don't know, to me, it's just like, you know, I love dogs. I love my dogs. Uh, you know, one of our dogs is a German Shepherd, a big dog. But, you don't, you know, I would hope that there would there'd never come a day when she would turn on us. But you just don't know, do you? Because you don't know what's... But you don't, you don't sort of try and make them, you know, make them. And, and a dog's nothing like that. You know, this is a killer whale, not a dog like dogs. Nature is to um, love their owners, isn't it? You'd have to do a lot for a dog to turn on its owner or there'd be, have to be something wrong with the dog to turn on its owner. Um, these are killer whales. You know, I don't know. You just think, well, they're so huge and terrifying, but... Um, Anyway, so let's have a look. There's Dawn, bless her, poor Dawn. You know, I think she loved Tillicum. She, you could see any interview, you see quite a few interviews with her uh, on the Blackfish documentary. She obviously loves her job. She loved Tillicum. I'm not saying she didn't. Um, but, you know, if an experienced trainer like that, if it can happen to her, anyway, let's play it. Is it just me, but he looks annoyed? I, I, he looks annoyed to me. He's given her a side eye there. A 
I, I can see the ponytail is not a good idea either, is it? I mean, I know it's looking at things in hind hindsight, but when she bent down there and her hair was so, I just thought, oh my goodness, that's so easy to just grab. He doesn't look happy. When you watch these videos, isn't it, you'd just like to, you wish you could just go back in time and just sort of pull her away and change the result of, you know, change what happened. No, I don't know if it's just me, but he looks really pissed off. Really, really pissed off.
The biggest tool we use here at SeaWorld is what's our hearts. We see the power of heart and hope into every interaction. So I hope Buddy's Day and the humor today will even be possible. And now on behalf of myself, Phil Lott, and Landon, of course, Shamu, we hope you enjoyed the Tyler Shamu experience and please enjoy the rest of your day here at SeaWorld. Uh-huh. Yeah. So then she sort of lies down with him for some like, um, you know, at the end of the show, normally they have a little bit of sort of downtime, you know, a little bit of sort of cuddling time, and that's when it happened. It's a bit like my film in this when I film. Yeah, it's fine. I'm coming. Well, go ahead. I'm not anybody's way. So she's lying down next to him on the rocks, and that's it. Obviously, uh, they're not allowed to show the. Um, well, there is there is a video, but you know, obviously, it's been removed. yeah very sad very sad but anyway so um yeah she was rubbing him uh, you know just stroking him as part of a post-show routine and he grabbed her by the ponytail and pulled her into the water and he did uh you know bite off her arm and swallow it he scalped her you know i mean it was awful it was awful and her autopsy said death by drowning and blunt force trauma Anyway, apparently on March the 30th, so, so this happened on February the 24th, 2010. On March the 30th, 2011, he returned to performing and high pressure water hoses were used to massage him rather than hands. Removable guardrails were used. I can't believe that he returned to performing, but I suppose in a way, what else would they do with him? They wouldn't put him down because he's worth too much money. Uh, so he often performed next to his grand, one of his his grandson Truer, uh, or his daughter. He had a daughter Malia or Tru Truer and Malia at the same time. Anyway, uh, then he was ill in December 2011 and he was removed from the show at the shows and then he started performing again in April 2012. And then in March 2016, SeaWorld announced that his health was deteriorating and it was thought he had a lung infection due to bacterial pneumonia. Uh, after, first of all, in May saying that he was getting better finally on January the 6th 2017 they announced that he had died early in the morning and the cause of death was a bacterial infection well if you believe you know I won't believe anything these people say who knows who knows what happened to him poor poor thing I mean so how old was he then let's see how old he was So he was only 35 when he died. So you talk about a whale that would probably have lived to 50, you know, or, or more if he was in the wild. 
he died age 35 and he in his life he killed three people you know it's uh, very very sad very very sad anyway uh hopefully this isn't gonna happen again now hi Stuart um Fayedra sorry I didn't see you I hope I've missed anybody coming in while I was uh, playing that video did you hear does anybody want a dog just I've got two dogs. You see, you talk about dogs. I've got two dogs. You can have if you want him. Uh, so yeah. So basically, I would recommend that you watch Blackfish. It's a really good documentary. It is sad, but it's a very, very good documentary, uh, and it shows you know other uh, attacks. I'm, I wonder if I can get up about that because the oh my, can you hear that chihuahua outside? It's screeching. Oh my god. I don't know. It's like chaos out there. Okay, let's see if we'll have a look at this Spanish guy. So yeah, he was called Alexis uh, Martinez. And he was only 29 years old and he had worked at the, he was killed at the Loro Parque. Let's get some photos of him up. In the Canary Islands he was. Let's see. Yeah. Like it's making more it's more about I want to look at Alexis we've got a photo of him yeah initially I mean that was a big cover up as well because he was killed during a Christmas show rehearsal but his girlfriend speaks on the Blackfish documentary and she said when they first found her they said he was fine that there'd been an incident, but it was fine. And then when she arrived at um, Loro Parque, uh, he was dead, you know? And they tried to cover it up, said it was an accident, and his body showed no signs of violence. But the autopsy said he died due to grave injuries sustained by an orca attack. Multiple compression fractures, tears to vital organs and the bite marks of the animal on his body i mean now why can i not find a photo of him uh, i want a photo of, of him let him yeah they keep just showing the photos of i think that's him here with uh dawn branchell so he had been trained i think at um Sea World, yeah. Why, why is there not a photo of him? Is that him? Yeah, no, that's a former. Is that him? I think that's him with the whale. But he had said to his girlfriend that he was worried. He had said to his girlfriend, uh, you know, I take my life in my hands every day when I get in the water. So, you know, I don't know, but if uh whales are so uh, killer whales are so intelligent they sense don't they maybe it just sensed you know that he wasn't happy he wasn't comfortable at where he doesn't look very comfortable on that photo to be honest you know who knows what goes through their minds bless them you know it's uh yeah i think that's him with uh dawn now another video i would just like to show you actually is if i can find it easily uh, this was a guy this guy was not um yeah this guy thankfully luckily for him 
he did manage to uh, escape but let's just have a look video just released capturing an extraordinary moment of crisis it shows a killer whale at sea world turning on and terrorizing the man who had been her performing partner and trainer for more than a decade she grabbed him dragged him underwater twisted him and tonight we're going to tell you what the trainer did to survive here's abc's matt gutman it's a dead ballet this killer whale grabbing trainer ken peters by the feet 5,000 pounds of muscle, teeth the size of bananas. Thad Lucinic has trained these animals for 35 years. It wasn't like she was biting down because if she would have... 35 would have years, this, this poor it's guy. Let me just get to the actual that video. She was pulling him underwater. She is Kisatka. It's November 2006 in San Diego. You see her dragging Peters down, ragdolling him, no. holding him under. 15, 30, 60 seconds pass. Scientists we spoke to today say there are dozens of games that whales like to play, but this time she's using Peters as a toy. Whales in captivity are taught that humans are fragile. That has clearly broken down here. Next, you see... She's just treating him like a rag doll. She grabbed his foot, took him right down to the bottom, brought him back up, took him back down again. You're bringing him up to the surface, allowing him to gasp for air. She dunks him three more times. The whale exerting her control. Well, if she wanted to kill him, she would have killed him. It's a killer whale. They're the top predator in the ocean. Case in point, these whales hunting for seals in the shallows. And playing, flipping seals, dozens of... We are taught to remain calm with the animals. If you get excited, the animal is going to get sick. That's why others don't jump to his rescue, because it would only excite the killer whale even more. She lets go. Peters eases down her back, past her dorsal fin. At the right moment... He makes a dash for it, tries oh. to walk, feet collapsing. Oh, God. In a statement, see... Now, he stayed so calm. Now, they show that full uh, on the Blackfish documentary. He His life was saved by the fact he just stayed calm. When she did bring him back up to the surface, he gulped for air, he just stroked her, he didn't get agitated. Though, God, God knows what was going on. I bet he never got in there again. Um... And what they did was they put a, like a net up and he managed to put, you saw him he moved down her body and then just swam for his life over that net. She jumped over the net, but luckily by the time he jumped, he, he she jumped over the net, he had, uh, let's see, look. God, he is so lucky to be alive. Tries to walk. Feet collapsing. She comes over the, the net. I, I, said Tuesday, this video I mean, it's shows incredible. The remarkable composure and the skillful execution. But what they tried to do with that then is uh, just let me turn it off. They used that as a, a way of showing just how well they're good they're. You know, they turned it to a, like a propaganda. Uh, publicity coup sort of thing look this is how this is what trainers should do when they're they've got problems and this is how good our trainers are and how well trained they are and how good they are you know so it's god did you see him and of course his feet were completely ripped so he couldn't he, he, he couldn't get out fast enough but his feet were actually just wrecked you know because the bloody uh, Killer whale had taken him down and crunched down on his feet. So, uh, oh, you're back now, Chumba. Did you have a little nap? <sighs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's... Um... What have you lost, princess? Yeah. He was lucky. He was lucky to survive. But yes, so that's the story of poor Tillicum. I hope Tillicum is running free now. Um, you know, it's a sad life, but he did take the lives of free people and it was unnecessary. You know, it's not his fault, you know, that he was kept in captivity like that and just snatched away from his natural environment. 
hopefully now we've moved on you know if they're now only 55 whales in captivity all over the world that's still 55 too many but let's hope in another 10 years maybe there'll only be 20 you know only ones that are, uh, are you know born into captivity um i don't know or maybe they'll let them escape they, they have released one just recently i think So, yeah, it's not his fault. Of course, it's not his fault, Leo, is it? But anyway, I just wanted to, I, I was sort of, um, I'm, I'm, I'm halfway, well, I've, I'm nearly to the end of it. I haven't managed to watch all of it yet. But I just wanted to tell people about it, see if people are interested in watching it while it's on Netflix. Because as I say, you know, I don't know where, if it's going to get taken off again because it just disappeared for years. It disappeared for years. Uh, Ocean World, they tried to sort of, you know, sue the directors and, you know, they tried to hush everything up, you know, because they didn't want the, um, they didn't want the bad publicity. But now uh, I think they've realised that, you know, after Blackfish and other sort of awareness, et cetera, people don't want to go to see these shows anymore. And, you know, it's a shame because, you know, they are good to watch. You can see why people wanted to go and see them. I'll say years ago, I've been to see the one in Valencia. I don't remember it being killer whales. It was dolphins, I think, dolphins. Now, whether dolphins thrive better, uh, obviously, they're smaller dolphins for a start. Killer whales are a whole different thing. You know, um, I don't know. You know, I'd have to look into it. I don't know how cruel it is to keep dolphins like that. At the end of the day, these animals, they swim, don't they? they that's what they do. Their whole life is just swimming. <laughs> and they swim massive distances, you know. So, you know, uh, that's what they do. So, and they have a good relationship with uh, mankind, if you like. Dolphins especially, don't they? Because dolphins have saved people, you know. And we shouldn't... Why do we always treat all these, like, dogs as well? You know, all these animals that are like our best friend that always just want to please us. And we just think it, we can just treat them like they're commodities. It makes me so angry, you know. Um, yeah, horses as well. Horses... Horses, they do like to, I don't know, you to, you know, Princess, more than me. I don't, I've never had a horse. My son used to go horse riding when he was young. And to be honest, I was glad when he gave it up because uh, I know horses too. You know, at the end of the day, they can sort of, you know, throw someone off and trample on them. So I was quite relieved, to be honest, when he gave up uh, horse riding. But, you know... Should they be free? Should, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, send me some pics. Okay, right. Well, thanks for being. It's been a quiet one tonight. Okay, I think because it's bank holiday and it's not my normal subject, is it? Normally, I'm talking about uh, true crime or Nicola Bully. But uh, I wanted to come on and tell you because I want you all to, if you haven't seen Blackfish, I think you should try and watch it because it's a very interesting documentary and um it is sad it is sad of course it's sad but um you know these things have got to be out there haven't they it's because of people like that made this blackfish documentary that things change that's how things change that's how things that get things get better people go out make documentaries expose things for what they are and then they can't hide behind uh you know they can't sort of have this false reality of like what they used to say that about the dorsal fins that you know this was just something that happens sometimes with uh, male killer whales or they could you know that they live longer in captivity than they do out in the wild you know absolute lies that they tell nobody challenging them so what happened with blackfish why it was so important was it challenged it challenged them so much that they shut it down well when they shut something down you know they're getting near to the uh, surface don't you oh rio's had horses as well 
Yeah, I... Oh, hi, lady dog lover. Oh, yeah, you, you have to start from the beginning. So I'm right at the end now. I've always been a bit nervous around horses just because of the fact that I've got... A, or I had a, a really good friend who was a real experienced, you know, rider. You know, she had her own horse for years. And then it, it just one day, it just had a bit of a... A bit, a bit like Tilikum, it had a bit of a psychosis, threw her off, trampled all over her and, you know, she nearly died because uh, it fractured her skull. And So I've always been a little bit scared of horses because uh, they're quite big, aren't they? And um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love them. And if they're behind, a, I love them when they're in their um, thing and they just put the head over and I feel safe then. But I don't like them to be... Uh, you know, around me, I certainly don't like to be behind them because they do kick, don't they? But um, my son used to go horse riding for a couple of years. But yours was seventeen hands. Yeah, she's okay now, but she did near. You know, she did nearly die. And honestly, she'd had horses all her life, and she was in her forties um, when it happened. When the incident happened, and just it just had one of them days i don't know yeah well that's why my son gave up horse riding in the end because i think he came off a couple of times and i think he was about eight or nine at the time maybe ten and he didn't like that so that was the end of that but uh he liked it for a, a while oh yeah, I think you've got to be, you know, to have ho horses. <laughs> Everyone I know who's had horses, they, uh, yeah, had plenty of injuries from them as well. You know, they're a bit skitsy, aren't they? That's what I think it is about horses. I think that for me, they're a little bit skitsy. So I, as much as I love them, and I do because I love all animals, uh, it's not an animal that I've ever thought that I would quite like. Ah, uh, bread to dance. Yeah, what the dressage and that? Do you mean? Yeah, it's like with racing. I mean, you know, horses like racing, don't they? But uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I don't know. Is it thoroughbreds that are skitty more? Yeah, you know, the, the horse that my son used to ride. I mean, gosh, it was a really docile. You know, obviously it was picked uh, at the stables where he used to go to. That horse. <laughs> Uh, that they'd give for the children. Oh, what happened there? They'd give for the children to uh, to ride. Was very sedate, you know. But um, oh yeah, well, yeah. It was a pony, wasn't it, Heather? Yeah, there was the woman who hurt her pony. And uh, did you not see that, Princess? Yeah, it was on the news. Uh, someone videoed it. Videoed it. Luckily, but um, she never really apologised either, did she, Heather? She never apologised. The whole, the pony was called Bruce, and she said that it had done something very dangerous. I think what happened personally with her. I don't know if you've, you know, when you have children, like, and if they disappear and you you panic, and then when they come back, you feel like it's. <laughs> you because uh you know you've been so worried about them it's like a nervous reaction i wonder if it was that because she sort of uh she ran into the he bruce the pony i think he ran into the road or something but it is a horrible picture yeah is if you see it yeah as a teacher if you see the video and the pictures you can see the pony is really sort of you know, pulling back from her. So I don't believe that that'd be the first time that she's hit it. It's just the first time that she's been caught hitting it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the news. Yeah, it was all over the news, Princess. I'm surprised you didn't see it. Yeah, Bruce the Pony. Oh, just something else I want to mention before I go. So, you know, they're taking about the Spanish uh, president of the football league. I'm going to do a video on that um, tomorrow about this guy. I bet he, God, I bet he could kick himself for kissing that uh, Spanish uh, footballer. You know, he's, got, he's likely to get prosecuted. And, do you know, I think what's been worse about his, his behaviour 
worse than what he did because he obviously got caught up in the moment but he's just not sorry he's not sorry he's tried to bully her now it's coming out about lots of other things about his behavior that he's done so it started this massive thing in spain it's a massive thing uh, and he's you know he's gone he's definitely gone and he'd be lucky if he doesn't you know literally get prosecuted but uh anyway i'm going to do a video about that tomorrow so tomorrow night for your members uh we've got the uh oh god i didn't see that david mark phillips kicking the corgis what did the queen didn't the queen go mad but you know what the royal family and any of these people that are in these you know the aristocracy uh the animals they're just like you know they're just they I, I don't think they look on them as i mean you know i know there's this thing about the queen and her corgis and what have you but they're like uh you know they're just like means to an end aren't they you know like the dogs that they take hunting and think oh you know don't get me started on hunting and that and then they shoot go shooting and hunting and etc yeah I, I just i honestly do not understand what pleasure uh, someone can get out of killing an animal you know for pleasure not for food but for pleasure i just don't get it i really really don't get it exactly they all want to ensure so you're in kung fu tomorrow rio i know I know well we're having a workshop tomorrow this is what we're doing in the members live tomorrow we're having a workshop about uh nicola bully uh and we're going to have a bit of a and we're going to make <laughs> we're going to try some um people you know you lot like the members actually speaking because i've never done that before we're going to have a little experiment see how it goes that's it chumba they're accessories they're not like you know they're not part of the family like my dogs uh, unfortunately for me they're not only the part of the family they run the house so it's like uh you know i don't think it's like that in these sort of circles they're the extra that you know they're not they're just like they're like the tillicums of uh, their households you know the households don't revolve around them though apparently the queen's corgis had their own bedroom and their own servants but yes princess kate kills animals yeah it doesn't surprise me yeah so i've got three dogs running it so i've got my two dogs and my son's dog and they all run my life uh as you can tell they bark when they feel like it they don't listen when i tell them to stop the only way i can get them to stop is by putting them in the bathroom and then they oh and then the german shepherd she goes in the bed uh, the bathroom put her in the bathroom she just opens the door and comes back out again so the princess i don't think the immigrants coming in are the criminals i think there's enough criminals here as it is oh no well, not here but uh in the uk i don't like always blaming the immigrants for everything you know or some of them will be criminals of course they're always good and bad in everybody but you've got to be careful for people trying to you know set people against each other oh you've got a cat chumba <laughs> oh god yeah of course david's got his massive dogs okay so again thank you have a brilliant evening thanks for being here with me on this bank holiday monday to listen to me chat a load of shit no i'm not but you know listen to me tell the story of poor tillicum it's important that we um remember tillicum and hope that this is never going to happen again that's what we have to hope so remember to always live in love very wisely uh very carefully very wisely look after your animals i know i don't even ask to tell you to do that i bet you're all all your households are ruled by your animals any of you that have got them and uh thank you so much and i will see you tomorrow tomorrow night if you, i'll see the members tomorrow night in the live and until then and until i see the rest of you again 
Thank you for all your subscribes. I don't think I've said thank you tonight. Thank you for all your subscribes, all your likes, shares, all your emails, participating in the chat. Thank you for anything you do to support my channel. I appreciate it a lot more than you know. Thank you so much. Yeah, a little bit different, David. I thought it's, sometimes it's nice to do something a little bit. It's still a little bit sad. Maybe we should do a happy one one time, but um, we'll see. Okay, adios.